We're glad to know that you're still there. It is at the run-up. And we promised you that we'll be bringing you a conversation around the Education Bank Bill for students. And to have that conversation with us is Theophilus Akachuba. He is a media consultant, a public affairs commentator. You're very welcome. Can you hear me? Mr. Akachuba, are you there? Thank you. All right. Uh, so, uh, we would want to get like a background, first off, uh, the student loan, as you know, I would want to call it in a very general term. How do you react to this uh, new development? Well, my, my, my thoughts, you know, I the other time when we spoke, we, we talked about, um, uh, what do you call it? We talked about ASU yeah. and the very many options that should be open to them. And we had a long conversation. Now, the federal government is already preparing itself for that future. With, the, with this bill that has been passed, waiting the assent of the president, it tells you that there is a preparation towards autonomy, full autonomy for Nigerian universities, in which the students who will be confronting the scenario of paying high fees will have the option of borrowing from this bank. We know that um, there is this general idea that um, student loans is old-fashioned and it's not working. The idea is this. The, it is the best way forward for our tertiary education. There is no other way. And there can be other ways. But this is the best way at this time. As the universities are going to move into autonomy, they will have to charge their own commercial fees. And government will not allow its own students or its own citizens to be confronted with a situation where if your parents can't afford, if you can't afford, if your guardians can't afford, you won't go to school. So a loan facility should be made available, which is optional for those who need it. It's a preparation for that inevitable future, which I'm very excited about. But uh, there are a lot of fears. First of all, let me just start with a, a new development. Uh, interest rate in Nigeria just moved from 15.5 to 16.5 and before that bill is even assented to there's a possibility the interest rate will even go high these students that will be taking this bill what else is being done by the government to make sure that when they take these uh, loans they can pay back how possible is it what possible? I saw proposing you know are you me? yes Are you with me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think the bill is proposing zero interest for student loans. Mm -hmm. So there is no fear about interest. For now. Okay. L let, let, me, let me put it differently. Um, some time ago, not too long ago, <clears throat> there was this scheme that the uh, NYSC, the youth coppers, will have to, when they finish their year, they'll, they can serve, like, for the next two years and be receiving, like, double of the money they were receiving, what we call Alawi, they'll be receiving it. And then inside those two years, they will be working as extension officers, teachers, and all that, so that when they finish, uh, they can have something doing. But there was no plan by the federal government that wanted to bring this scheme for these same people after the two years to have a steady job, maybe empower them to do what they're supposed to do with the learning that they've had in the extra two years. How can this loans or scheme, how can this uh, thing work when you're just taking loans and there is no corresponding jobs that when you leave the university that you are taking so much loans to go and do. A loan is a loan. You will mm -hmm. pay back, whether with interest or not. If I take a million naira, I'll pay a million naira back. But I'm out of school and I don't have a job. How will that work out? Yes, um, that is the, it's a general concern. 
It's indeed true that um, there are no jobs, and not enough jobs for the number of graduates that we produce. That is a problem that government must continue to solve. And they are all, you know, job creation is a factor of uh, it's something that uh, is a business of everyone. It's a business of federal government, state government, local government, private individuals and organizations. And then foreign direct investments and foreign investments. But if you have a country where you have the, the level of insecurity that we have all talked about and we have experienced, you will notice that investment will be reduced. If you look at the um, level of corruption that is going on, organizations will be started. Many workers themselves collapse the business because of their indifferent time. So, indeed, there are not enough jobs, but the future of any country is always brighter. And so the government will continue to work towards a better future, hoping that by the time they are able to improve on the general well-being of the country, its infrastructure, vis-a-vis -vis electricity, roads, rail network, and reduce and increase the level of security, jobs naturally will follow a vibrant and educated population. You know that it's not enough to have a country of 200 million people. They have to be employed, and you've got to train them ready for that future. So we know it will impact on repayment, but the government will factor that in into the circumstance because the government will guarantee these loans. And so the government must look at it and see. It's a, it's a very difficult thing. That's why you see the US, even Joe Biden's attempt to forgive student loan was rejected by the courts. The court said no, they must pay. Because a lot of people are falling into default even in the US, arising from COVID. And the attendant loss of jobs occasioned by many organized companies moving to China. So it's happening even in countries like the US that they are default. So our government have enough information to prepare for defaults in the future or delay in repayment. But there are, there are two things here. We, we have uh, training the people that will potentially come to do the jobs and then creating the jobs themselves which one did you th do you think should have come first uh, is it that they're putting the the cart before the horse by thinking about churning out thousands upon thousands of students that will now come and wait for the government to try to create jobs remember before this administration came the promise was that a million a uh, hundred million jobs will be available and or at least a, a hundred million people will be removed from poverty. Now we have a hundred and thirty million people from the reports that we've had fallen that have fallen into poverty. So, in a case where we see our government as I don't know whether to say bereft of ideas to create jobs for the people, had which one do you think should have come first? Is it not trying to innovate ways to create jobs before you think about uh, making education easier for the people who will come and man these jobs? I don't know. Your take, please. Well, um, any one of them, if you look at it, where the business of creating jobs has been an ongoing process. But you see that this issue of university autonomy, you know, it's another area that we are not, we are producing unemployable graduates and the country is bleeding financially because of the kinds of money that we spend in, foreign, in seeking foreign education. So if government is able to resolve the university situation, one, it will free the money that government spends in running universities today. Government will retain that money and put the money in the creation of jobs by improving infrastructure and security. And naturally, the job creation will follow a beautiful country with good infrastructure because companies and investors will come here who want to establish their businesses in the country. And more of our people who finish, who are properly educated, we create companies that will create with people. So I think the government is attacking it because the business of job creation is not its own, but it has already established so many investors that it is unable to fund. And on a level, increasing level, cost of funding investors continue to go up. 
where resources are becoming lean. So the government's consideration, of course, from what we see, is that they have to stop the bleeding, the cost of running universities, and allow the universities to run themselves, and then save the old citizens by channeling those monies into loans. So that if they start paying back, however small the installment, it will be a revolving loan that will educate more people. Very strategic, and that's what we should have done many years ago. Yeah, it's okay. Let's applaud the government, but um, whenever the government in Nigeria, I mean, uh, say something about giving loans to the citizenry, it's uh, we kind of like look at it with a pinch of salt. Like, okay, uh, they talked about trade and money. That was a direct um, uh, expenditure from a batch of loot, as we call it, uh, of that year. And we didn't see much of it, and eventually it was on an election year, and a lot of people said the money just uh, went down the drain in the name of trader money. Now they're talking about loans that will be given to students. What qualifies the students to become beneficiaries of these loans? We do not even know whether it will also have a Nigerian factor and all that. Do you think that, that uh, monitoring and everything that should make that project work can be had right? or from the way you have seen, they have already had it right, that we can get to where we want that student loan thing to get to when it, it kicks off? Well, what, just as you said, the main problem we have in our country is not the intention of the project that we develop or implement. It is the cross in motivation of those who implement them. So the Nigerian factor you have said, which is in, in most cases is a negative factor. I don't think the Nigerian factor is, is said to be Nigerian factor for a positive purpose. Mm. So if it is the Nigerian factor for, for negative, that, that's how do we deal with that? We cannot bring aliens to run Nigeria. And so we all must be up and doing to ensure that the human Nigerian that is put in these places are made to do what they should do because her country is bedeviled by unpatriotic citizens who are holding various offices and taking advantage of those offices for their personal good. That's a common phenomenon which is sad. So my hope is that if this is developed we should make it work. What qualifies a student, according to the, the act, it says academically, meaning you have gained admission and you desire the loan. Nothing else should be a condition. Ability to pay back is not considered. Collateral is not requested. So you've gained admission and you want the loan because it will be on your record that you owe a student loan. It can affect your rating, can affect your promotion, can affect a lot of things in the future. So it's called once a person qualifies academically, meaning he has been admitted into a university. Okay. That person submitting all that to the bank will get that loan, that money disbursed. And then he will think of repayment after graduation. When I went to South Africa, I was in a shopping, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a mall, in a supermarket. And I saw two young people, a boy, a boy and a girl. They were selling uh, a certain product. So I, I, I stopped by to look at what they were selling. And they asked me, please buy, sir. We are, we are doing this to pay our loan. Our student loan is due, so I had to do this quickly so that the next installment do not fall. I have not gotten a regular job. Are you getting that picture? So this is somebody who finished school in South Africa by using the facility of the student loan and he's, he's finished school and he decided to do a quick salesmanship in order to pay student loan. So every one of us will respond to it differently. That one has not got a job. And South Africans did not say because everybody has not got a job, therefore we don't do student In America, not everyone gets a job. And yet, the student loan system is made to continue to work. So we must continue to do it. Okay, uh, well, if there's anything that Nigerians have, it's faith. So we have faith that things will work out. And sometimes we experiment, and then it works out for us. 
Sometimes it doesn't uh, work out, but we'll still have something to learn. Mr. Akatuba, thank you so much for coming on the show today to uh, share your perspective. I, I want to thank you. Let me remind you, just now I heard there was a summit by the, by the National Assembly Speaker of the House of Rep. All right, Honorable Bajabia Bajabia Mila, very yes, yes. difficult name to pronounce. <laughs> he held a summit. Ambassador was there. The, the, the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, including the current uh, ASU president. Do you know that none of them in the academia suggested autonomy for universities? Mm. They, they shy away from that. They, they kept digging into the current system of grabbing more, getting more money. We have all seen how our universities continue to dilapidate in, in, in physical infrastructure and in academic implementation. And we are not worried that we must, the country must free the federal government continuously of the burden of the huge weight it carries. Today, I buy petrol today, uh, more than 300 naira is put in my pocket per liter. Everyone that buys petrol. And we want it to continue. And all of this is from the same small boss of a federal government. It just cannot sustain it. And that's why in all aspects of our life, we have problems. And we're wondering how do we have problems? We have problems because we don't have money to meet up all these needs at the same time. So if we do this, it will help. And we would prefer my children take the loan and go to the school well and they do not strike. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Akatuba. Uh, for that ad hey. addendum. <laughs> okay. Um, now maybe anybody who doesn't step up to our responsibility, we'll call them alien. So <laughs> don't be alien. Um, you know, while know. he was talking, something struck me. He mentioned how that even in America, mm -hmm. uh, it's not very rosy. I, I can't really quote him, you know, yeah, verbatim right now. But, you know, he was trying to mention how that it's not easy anywhere in the world. We should just take responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot compare because... In America, they have a system that works. There is so many ways to hold these people responsible. Like when they get the loan, they just can't run away or something. Get where I'm coming from. Yeah. You understand? And then it, when you asked him the question about putting the cart before the uh, horse, the horse um, I, I feel like it's, a, it's going to be a very long process. Please, I'm not trying to be negative. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the idea, but I, and I would like to see it work, but I don't think we have everything it needs, you know, it requires to make it work. Uh, I guess that will be conversation for <laughs> another day. We'll keep talking about the education system in Nigeria. But now we're going to take a quick break uh, for the news to come up. And when we return, the run-up will continue. Stay with us.